Hey, what's up guys? Today we're going to be going over how to control a DC motor using a Raspberry Pi through it, uh, using an Xbox controller. And I have uh, this H-Bridge right over here. Um, this is the actual one that I'm using. You don't have to use this one necessarily, but uh, every H-Bridge is going to be a little bit different. The way that mine is actually wired up, I need uh, three 5 volt inputs on the actual bridge and that's these three right here and it goes over to this 5 volt rail and this is the actual ground um, pin that you actually need to tie into the rest of the grounds and uh, the PWM signals actually come in on these two outer pins right here. You can actually go straight over to the Raspberry Pi but in my instance I am going to be using an oscilloscope later in the video just to show you the actual PWM signal. So that's actually why I have it hooked up to the breadboard like I do right here. I am using a buck converter to actually convert that 7.2 volts to the 5 volts that I need to power the Raspberry Pi and also the H-Bridge controller. You don't actually need to do that necessarily. You, you will need 5 volts for the actual uh, H-Bridge controller in my instance, but uh, you can also power the Raspberry Pi just off of USB-C. You don't have to do it like I am right off of... Uh, the the pins the, the uh, five volt pin and the ground pin you do need to tie the raspberry pi's ground to the ground rail though <clears throat> and i also have in my instance um to smooth out the voltage a little bit uh, whenever this thing starts pulling more current i do have uh, some capacitors that i actually have tied into the uh, five volt rail and also the ground and with the other side that's actually going to be powering the DC motor, you're going to want to hook up your uh, 7.2 volts uh, to the actual uh, battery voltage on this uh, screw right here, and you're going to want to hook up the ground with this screw, and then the PWM signals are going to be coming out of these two right here, just right into your uh, DC motor over here. All these parts are going to be inside of the description if you want to actually uh, do this exact same project. The actual pins that I'm using, you can actually see here 29 and 31, you'll see that reflected in my code. And I'm also using the ground pin right here and also the 5 volt pin right here to actually power the Raspberry Pi. So I'm going to show you more about the code here in a second. Alright guys, so the first thing that we're going to be going over inside of this video is what is EVDev and what is EVTest. EVDev and EVTest are a, two programs that you can use to uh, read the output from a device. In this case we're going to be using it on an Xbox controller so we can have a variable signal that we can represent as a PWM signal to output to our DC motor. EV test is pretty much what we're going to be using to see what outputs the Xbox controller gives us and EV dev is actually what we're using to do that inside of our code. And you can actually see us use EV dev down inside of this little snippet of code right here. Now, we are going to need to import EVDev, the library, and we're also going to have to uh, point out our device using EVDev.inputDevice inside of our code, and then either the forward slash dev forward slash input, and then your device, and then EVDev.ecodes, and this is actually going to be uh, us further selecting what output from the controller we're going to be using. And EVTest, like I said, is going to be just so we can see all of the outputs from the controller. We are going to need to use a this uh, program right here, Bluetooth Control, and this is a Blues program on Linux. And this is what we're going to be using inside of the terminal to actually connect the Raspberry Pi to the Xbox controller. You can actually see down here I have a little snippet of code. And this is just uh, connecting to the Bluetooth Control uh, terminal. Yep, and you're just going to type Bluetooth Control right inside of your terminal. Then you're going to hit scan on to actually scan all the devices that you can connect to. And the reason you're doing this is just to find the MAC address. You're going to pair and then uh, put your MAC address to the device you want to connect to. Trust and then put the MAC address that you want to connect to. And then connect and this should connect to the device. This is a little bit finicky. You're going to see I end up running into some trouble in the video. If you guys have any better ways of connecting, I'm always glad to hear it. <clears throat> because I do have some trouble with this every once in a while and you're just gonna put it inside a pairing mode you are gonna want to make sure that your Xbox controller is Bluetooth capable before doing this as well and you can actually see here I did connect to the Xbox controller and I'm just removing it uh, because I, if uh, you disconnect 
or if you connect this Xbox controller to a different device, it can be a little difficult to reconnect it without removing it first. You can see I almost copied the wrong MAC address, it's the one down below here. Yep, pair, pair successful. And then we're gonna get it to trust the uh, device and then connect to the device. Connection successful, and you can actually see your Xbox controllers connected. For some reason, it just randomly disconnected, and I had to do this over again. But it's a little finicky, like I said. And this is what we're going to need to install to actually use EV Test and uh, EV Dev inside of our um, Python code, and also NumPy. We're also going to be using that. And you can see here, I just had to remove the device again and try to reconnect the Bluetooth controller. And you can see now we have a vent too, and that's actually our Xbox controller there. It is good to ls dev forward slash dev forward slash input just to make sure that uh, you know what you had before and after you connect the controller so you know which one's yours. And you can see EBS, ABS gas, and EBS, ABS, uh, and ABS brake down there. The right trigger is gas, the left trigger is brake, so we're actually going to be using that inside of our code to select what triggers or what buttons on the controller we want to use. For some reason, I decided to do this inside of Vim, but uh, never hurts getting a little more practice in Vim. And you can see that we're importing um, RPI.GPIO, Time, uh, EVDev, NumPy, and all these others. And we're setting up uh, the pins on the Raspberry Pi with GPIO.set mode and getting the uh, GPI.board set up. And, um, GPI.setup, uh, we're setting up pin 29 and 31 and as outputs. We're also having a PWM signal at 10,000 and we're starting it out at zero. So. Now we're just setting up our controller right here. And we're setting up two methods right here for our forward and our reverse. And the main difference here is that we're just using pin 29 for um, forward and we're using pin 31 for reverse. And you can see I'm going to actually use Vim here, or not Vim, but uh, VS Code instead of the terminal editor. That's the only difference in between forwards and backwards is the pin that we're using. So, and we're outputting, I uh, like changing the duty cycle. Um, uh, using the variable speed and we're going to actually make that variable down below here. So you can see we're making an if statement um, uh, that is making sure that it's ev underscore abs and then we're actually doing another if statement, a nested if inside of that if statement and making sure that it's abs, ABS underscore gas and this is going to make sure that it's the right trigger that we're reading for everything inside of this if statement and you can see ABS gas right over here inside of EV test so you can see that we're remapping the values so a volume between 0 and 1023 to a volume between 0 and 100 and we're just printing out what value that we're 
actually getting. And you can see we're doing an LF, but this one's going to be for ABS underscore break. So whenever we press the left trigger, it's going to be in this LF statement. And we're also calling that method down below here. Inside of backwards uh, parentheses speed, we're actually outputting that variable there to that method. Yep. ABS gas, you can see where we got that inside of test and ABS break. Yep. And you can see they're both in EV ABS. That's why we're actually using that if statement right there. You can actually see that I didn't actually call the forward method inside of this if statement, so I'm just throwing that in there real quick, for, uh, forward, calling that forward method. And I did end up blocking the command I ran for this, but I'm just doing a sudo python 3 dc underscore motor dot pi. <clears throat> and you can actually see that it's working right away. It's actually outputting it to that DC motor. And you can also see that it's a variable signal, so it's not a on or off with a DC motor, which is perfect for like a like a RC car or something, which I did end up making. I'm possibly make a video on that. This is where it's very important to have those capacitors in there. Because like whenever it starts drawing more current, it'll start dropping the voltage and it might turn your Raspberry Pi off. It happened to me. But you can actually see right here how I got it wired up a little bit. But uh, I did end up putting the probe for that oscilloscope on here. And I can actually show you that PWM so signal from the oscilloscope here in a second. So you can see the less you press the trigger, it, the width of the actual PWM signal is less. You can see the top line is 5 volts and the bottom line is ground. So the more 5 volts you have um, in a PWM signal, the closer you'll be to the full voltage. So, hey, thanks for watching. The code's in the description and peace.